Welcome to the Red V TV preview show, supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2019 season. As we look ahead to the round 17 Betfred Super League clash against the London Broncos down at Ealing Trailfinders Club somewhere in London on Sunday. It's a new one, isn't it? Need a sat now. For, yeah, another ground to tick off, though. Yeah. Um, what much of it is there anyway? One stand behind the sticks, one down the side. Yeah. Um, and a 4G pitch. Mm. It's probably that's probably had something to do with the squad that's been named. And five changes. Five changes indeed. I've actually got the the tweet because I couldn't remember them all. Um, so we've got Phil Farge coming in as well as Adam Swift, Kyler Moore, James Bentley and Jack Wellsby and they've replaced Alex Wormsley and Johnny Lomax who it's been said in local media this week by Justin Holbrook that they'd have a rest uh, with Tommy Makinson, Zeb Tyre and Aaron Smith also dropping out. A few of them enforced potentially with it being the plastic pitch I think we we said we've said previously in the last few weeks that there's going to be a few players you'll miss out who don't normally play at Witness when we play there. Um, Johnny Lomax, Tommy Makin, some people have, who've had injuries in the past on those pitches. So with the squad depth, completely the right decision to make, isn't it? Yeah, we train on a four G pitch though at Ruskin. Um, at Holbrook again has alluded to that, and he said that his doctors have said there's no real uh, correlation between injuries and playing on a four mm. G pitch. Whether that, and I know we'll, we'll end up getting bagged by our witness followers for me saying this, but the witness pitch wasn't in the greatest condition when we played there, and they've rectified that by relaying. Yeah, it was like a, it was a community pitch, wasn't yes. it? So you'd have five aside, Morris dancing on the Saturday, and then Sunday afternoon you'd end up with the Yeah, it, it's unfortunate that witness have found themselves in the position where they, where they probably haven't been able to relay because they are still making money off it, and I think they've rectified that now. Um but yeah, you probably think that Lomax and Makinson dropping out is a little bit of precaution, but also squad management. And as you say, yeah. we've got the likes of Phil Fice to come in after his head knock the other week and Danny Richardson to play in the halves. We've got Adam Swift, who has moved on to, to Hull for the start of next season, who is a Super League winger to come in for Makinson. Like next week, for example, Adam Swift, for me, I'd probably leave him in if Makinson comes back. And give Regan Grace a break. Yeah, give him a week off. Well, that's it. We, I know Holbrook said that he, he doesn't really rest players unless they need it. Um, like if they're carrying a niggle or they, they have been playing big minutes. Like Worms, it has been. And we, we get people back. But it's the perfect opportunity to use the full squad. That said, people a rest. that said, there's a difference this season, I think, between what Holbrook has said publicly... And what he's actually done in practice. Yeah, yeah, probably so. To be and fair, and obviously you've got to show respect to the opposition. So yes. you're not going to say I'm resting players, but at times you have to believe that's what we have actually done. Yeah, I mean you can see, as as you've just said, you can see why Lomax is being rested. I mean he's 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 played quite a bit. I know he's missed a couple this season, but there's no point risking him on on a uh, an artificial surface. Warmsley again, he's been playing big minutes in the absence of Thompson, uh, LMS. And a more. We've got all three of them back this weekend. Perfect opportunity. A for Luke Thompson to get more minutes under his belt. B Louis to do the same. Kyler Moore to show why he's worthy of a shirt in the seventeen as well. Because Kyler Moore has improved and improved as the season's gone on. And still no deal for next season at the moment for Kyler Moore. Mm. And you have to think there's some sort of deal in the offer for offering for Kyler Moore because Wigan could have done worse than looking. From what they've signed, Kyler Moore would walk into that Wigan team. So maybe he's after a, a better offer somewhere else. Well, maybe. Uh, Potentially, maybe still after a deal at Saints. I'd, I'd imagine he would still be after a deal at Saints. It's a great club to play for, yeah. isn't it? Um, and if he can get another 12-month extension, and, and kind of... He, he won't be happy, and I think he said this as well. He's not happy with being fifth-choice prop. He wants to play big minutes. And he started doing that now, and he started showing the form of his first couple of seasons yeah. in at Saints and the reason why we signed him. And it's great to see because while we we have mentioned that his form did drop off and it's not unfair to do so because it it's, our, it's our opinion and it, it yeah. did. And pe other people were saying it as well. And if, and if it hadn't, he wouldn't have found himself down the pecking order. Yeah, and you look at it now and you think, you know what, Kyle, you've gone away, you've done the hard work, fair play to you. Yeah. Um, would it be the end of the world 
if we didn't win at the weekend? No, we've got the buffer. I mean, yeah, we've got to go to Warrington twice, haven't we? So we, we could do with winning at least one of them. We tend to do all right over at Warrington. But it's not it's not the end of the world. Um, we've got that buffer. We've, we've given ourselves a um, six-point lead at the top of the table. Plus, makes things interesting at the bottom. I was going to say, can you reckon a few minute leads if we lost at the weekend? Um, I seen a stat earlier on. As it stands at the moment, we only need to win six out of 13 to guarantee a top two finish. Brilliant. Um, and that's assuming third place probably win every game. So, essentially, you could probably say two or three wins completely well, would guarantee it. Um, but, yeah, that buffer, we've built ourselves the opportunity and put ourselves in that position for it. Um, it could be a dicey place to go, London. They've turned Wigan over there yeah. this season. They've turned Wakefield over, I think it's a couple of times. Um so and they'll probably know every little bump on that pitch. So if we don't turn up with the right attitude, it could be a dodgy afternoon for us. They've run a couple of teams close as well down there. I mean, even up here, I know we nailed them, but it was tight for a while. It was, and it, it yeah, it was a little bit greasy and all that. But they, they started doing like trick plays and they backed themselves to defend. If we got the ball back on our own forty, they backed themselves to kind of defend us for 60 metres which fair play to them listen they've got to try something different because if they try and go toe to toe with one of the top teams more often than not they'll find themselves getting beaten by by what they well cricket score if they can do something a little bit different if they can look for the trick play catch somebody off guard put a seed of doubt in their mind that's where they'll start picking up points I think I've not seen much of London this year if they're not doing that against the teams round them as well I think they're missing a trick. They've got to, and not always the same short kickoff or, um, I don't know, same set plays, but they've got to come up with something brand new. Alan Smith drops out as well. Possibly that might be an injury concern. It must be an injury because you'd assume that he might have played this weekend. Uh, we, we, we were tweeted earlier on, somebody sent us a tweet saying James Roby may be undergoing groin surgery. Um, I'm sure we might say something from the club next week if that's true or not, but... If it is true and it's a six-week break for him, this could be his well send-off game before we can send him on his summer holidays. Unless, as the the nineteen-man squad goes, sometimes you see changes. Yeah. Would, it, would it surprise you to see Aaron Smith running out on Sunday afternoon? Well, yeah. Um, that said, if the decision has been to send Roby away for surgery, probably couldn't have, couldn't have come at a, a probably a better time for us, really, especially with the. The semi draw that we got, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. We, you've got to manage your squad, and Aaron Smith's been getting game time, and he's not let anybody down. I'd like to see him run a little bit more from dummy half uh, every so often, but he's a young lad, he'll no doubt get told or uh, given little bits of advice from Holbrook, from Long, from Roby around the club. Um, and you know what, if he plays on Sunday. Plays on Sunday. It's more, more for his education. Do you know what? Is anybody worried about any seventeen that we put out this season? I, uh, f- for mo- for ninety nine percent of games, Holbrook could put the players in a pot, pick them out as lucky dip, and I'd still be confident that we'd go and get a result the way we're playing. I hope he doesn't, because I no offense, I don't want to see like Louis at full back or. Uh, He's played everywhere else. <laughs> he has, yeah, and. Uh, yeah, is it the modern Phil Vivas? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, moving on from Sunday's game, um, we've just alluded to the cup draw a little bit. Is that the draw we wanted? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't you can't dress it up, can you? It's a part time team. The 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 lowest ranked team in the draw. It is what you want. We heart back to last season. I remember being at the, the whole game and hearing the cheers for because we drew Catalan who were the were they the lowest ranked team at the time. In hindsight, and I actually I said and you can probably go back on the videos. I said it would be harder than we thought. Will Halifax? No. <laughs> I'm so, I, and and, and, and that's it. With the greatest respect to yeah. Halifax, if they if they can try and keep it tight, they need to almost do what I've just said. London need to do. And they need to rip up the playbook and you know start... what? Just go and enjoy themselves. Yeah. Try yeah. and complete your sets, kick yeah. long and... 
uh, defend as long as you can. Yeah, exactly. And they, they've got some wily characters. You see, yeah. you see Scott Morell, uh, and who Gary Schofield said this week could do a good, good job for Leeds. So keep up, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah th th listen. I hope they don't disgrace themselves. I know. Um, I don't think I don't think they can disgrace no. themselves getting this far to begin with. It's it's only if they get a bit overexcited and and kind of I don't know a bit of over exuberance because if they ended up a man down for any reason whether it be a simbinin or something like that you hope let them keep their heads 13 against 13 and I, I think class class is obviously going to show through that said I was a bit disappointed by the RFL's decision to put us as the, the last game on especially with potentially having a, the women's team who could be in the, the challenge cup final as the first game of the day wouldn't it have made sense to put us, well, the women's game, Saints, Halifax, and then potentially have people hang around for the Warrington Hull game. Because you can't imagine many Warrington and Hull getting in early to watch us against Halifax. It just seems, I don't know, if they want a full stadium, I don't get what the thinking is behind it. Right, it's ifs and buts with the women's team. Hopefully, again, they get to the cup final. That's ifs and buts. They've got Wigan up next. Um, totally Wigan Stadium. Totally Wigan Stadium. 23rd of June, yep. Sunday afternoon. 12 o'clock currently, um, which I've seen a couple of people have want it a bit, little bit later but that's a current uh, state of play it's all ifs and buts <laughs> you'd think that not many of it, whichever team gets knocked out against uh, in the Warrington Hull game will they do what a lot of Saints fans did last year and just go home yes so I, you could you could argue that even, Saint, even if you win are you going to hang around to potentially watch Saints put a massive score on the championship team or you go to Saints Halifax and I can see the arguments yeah. for putting Saints Halifax on first, but it was a BBC decision, wasn't it? Never mind. Um, and the other massive news this week is our lovely French pal, Theo Farge, has signed another two-year deal. Great news. Um, we couldn't have asked for better, could we? I think I posted a... Um, we still can. Hulk okay. Hulk and Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I posted um, a squad contract list. And the stability in the squad now, there's pretty much everybody you're happy with. There's no scapegoats in this in this squad at all that anybody wants rid of. And you look at the dates for the contracts and everybody's 2020, 2021, 2022 pretty much. It's stability and it's frightening for the rest of the Super League when you watch some of the dross that is getting, well, milled around the rest of the teams. And you think, you wouldn't want anybody, any of them near your club. So the way we're, we are as a, as a squad and a club at the moment... Everything is rosy. I still think the most uh, important signing that we've got to make is Holbrook um, because he's getting a tune out of these players. There's no saying that this... I mean, this squad of players is showing what it's capable of. If you lose Holbrook and bring in the wrong coach, like, unfortunately, the last coach was, you might not necessarily get a tune out of him. And that's, that is not, not the worry, but that's, the I think, the next big one. Because we've got... Tom Moore for another year and I know um, we want, all want him to sign but we've got him for another year so I'm pretty relaxed time. I think Holbrook will be here the, all the signs are that it all sounds positive it all sounds positive yeah. and, and the way the players are committing themselves um, so all is happy on the Western Front and the Western Terrace as well yeah and it's that's it it's, uh, five signing is, a, is a, uh, a good sign there'll always be the question mark over who people want in the halves whether it's him or Richardson. Where does that leave Danny Richardson for you at this moment in time? Well, I mean, to be fair with the way that Holbrook's managing the squad, Richardson's still getting a bit of game time. You can understand Danny wanting more game time than that. He played every game last year. Do you end up in a swift holbrook Grace situation? A eh, swift holbrook Grace. <laughs> no, you don't. Do you end up in a swift making some Grace situation where all good enough to play Super League and unfortunately what... You end up with another one else, which again, obviously, it was Adam Swift. Could it be a Danny Richard situation, and he may have to look to move on? Possibly so, because you've got to again. It's the I always keep saying this. It's a salary cap sport, so you can only keep so many players and keep so many players happy. You've always got the academy kids pushing through, and yeah. there's the chance of someone who is better than all three of the ones we've named, yeah. possibly stagnating and going somewhere else. Like You look at Jack Wellsby, who can play full-back or six. Is it, um, but, and this is where you might rush yeah. you, your academy staff. This is where they earn their bread and butter by making these tough decisions yeah. and predicting who's going to make it. 
potentially three or four years down the line. Yeah, that's it. I mean, nobody nobody wants to see Danny Richardson leave the club. No. If Danny it's, Richardson... If, if, listen, if we can keep Danny Richardson happy and he's happy to play the role that potentially he's currently playing or just keep trying to push yeah. Lomax and Farge for a place in the halves, more than happy for him to stay. We keep, we've said it before. Um, I think we're just a little bit pragmatic. Yeah. I think we, we've said it before that Richardson is probably the most natural seven at the club. But unfortunately, at the minute, he's not getting picked. It, Danny Richardson would walk into probably at least eight or nine of the other Super League sides yeah. in the halves. Yeah. No danger. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's, he's just in a position where he's behind Farge and Lomax. So yeah. Up. That's it. He's got talent. And he's still a young lad. He's still got to learn like first uh, at first team level. We did, we did get accused of... Uh, Scapegoating Richardson for last season the other day. Did you realise, by the way? Yeah, it's Except we had a season preview video where I think we asked the question, who did, who did I prefer, Farge or Richardson? And I went, uh, Danny Richardson. But it is one of them. It's not down to us who picks the team. If the club watch this, they're not going to turn around and say, hey, them two fat lads on the sofa uh, decided that Richardson was better than Farge. We're going we're gonna to throw him in his <laughs> do, do, do you think they listened to us when we said about that plastic pitch and who we should <laughs> rest this week? Because we seem to have done a few of them. <laughs> yeah, I think, that's, I think that's just good sense, isn't it? It's good sense. The club see uh, Farge and Richardson in training. They see who is training the best and, and fitting into the systems better and it, there might be like a hers breadth between the two of them and it's just the fact that Theo's got the shirt he's not had a bad run of form in the team so how do you drop him yeah and that's why Holbrook gets paid the big bucks yep um, and the deal for Farge suits the club as well doesn't it yes it's a two year deal Farge you were led to believe would like to go to the NRL eventually there's rumours that Canterbury are interested in him, potentially in a couple of years as well. So it works for both parties, doesn't it? Farge won't be um, past the stage of being able to go to Australia. We get Theo Farge for a couple of years and see how the academy players develop underneath. It could be a situation where Farge in two years does say, I'm going to the NRL. We've got an academy player who isn't ready and we might have to get an old head in for a year or so just to tide us over. Yeah, possibly so. It, or it depends on, on the, the whole Richardson situation. If he signed a, an extension, it might be a case of, well, you know what, he's, he's going to get a, yeah. a, a crack at this. We've not got anyone who's... Because our Lomax in a couple of years well, yeah. might be coming towards the end of his career. Well, yeah, that's it. He might, he might be one of them that it's we're managing him like we manage James Roby. Um, yeah, I well, think... Could it be good if we could put Johnny Lomax in bubble wrap <laughs> for the next five years and just roll him out for all the big games <laughs> when we need him? Put him, him and James Roby in one of them Austin Powers triadic <laughs> James. Yeah, just keep him, keep him fresh. Yeah. That's it. You can, you can almost see that that James is starting to to wind down now. I don't think Johnny is. Um, but yeah, it's that's it. it. It suits the club. If Theo then wants to extend his deal with us in two years, happy days. Great. If Theo wants to go to the NRL, happy days. He, he goes. I think blessings. Yeah. I think if anybody goes to the NRL, they go with your blessings. Because not Luke Thompson. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Voodoo dolls will be out. <laughs> Sign that contract. Luke, if you're looking for him, his address is. <laughs> um, no, that's it. If, if a play goes. You wouldn't catch me. <laughs> you're joking, are you? <laughs> I've seen milk turn quicker than you. <laughs> In the younger days, I was alright. Um, yeah, if, if a play goes to the NRL, they go with blessing. They're going to try and better themselves yeah. well go to a better competition and test themselves against some of the best players in the world aren't they that said if you want to test yourselves against the best players in the world make sure you actually win a grand final this season and we will be able to pick our best 17 for a world cup challenge game marker is set yeah but that's it done and dusted um we will catch you for an instant fan reaction down in i was gonna say that day london is that how they say it yeah, it's that, so, that sounds exactly like they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last Louis to teach us at some point. Um, yeah, we'll see you in London on Sunday. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and give us a couple of thumbs down.